installment of the Ramadan Bazaar series and the celebrations start tomorrow. Um, most of my Muslim uh, Malaysian staff have actually gone back to Malaysia, so it's a little bit quiet at my end. But uh, welcome, Linda. Good to have you on board again. Thanks. And we're making satay today, and there are essentially about three components to a proper satay meal. Now, um, just before we went on air, I, I, I was trying to look for satay bamboo skewers that, we, that I could use to skewer the meat with. So I'm getting one of my crew members to look for the skewers now. It's just because I do a lot of my cooking over at my commercial kitchen facilities off-site from here. Uh, they might have taken them all over there. But anyway, okay, satay. Sorry, that's Noah. <laughs> satay uh, for the uninitiated are like basically Malaysian um, skewered meat. Um, and in Malaysia, now there's one thing I found a little bit um, hard to get used to when I first came to Australia some 30 years ago was that uh, the Australian experience of skewered meat tends to be um, meat that's in very like you know big chunks of meat on a, a on a stick like what we would call a kebab sort of thing. And back in those days, almost no one sold satay. Uh, anywhere here in Sydney except for people from China and that sort of stuff and their chunks of meat tend to be very big so when I started selling satay I actually started out my Malaysian food business as a satay specialist uh, when I started selling it and make them like the, the way we Malaysians would make them back home really small the Aussies often felt like really ripped off but that's how it's actually meant to be they're not meant to be big giant like slabs of meat they're meant to be uh, cut into quite um, small pieces um, I've got some chicken yeah, as you can see, I'm a little bit disorganized. I'm using chicken breast, but generally you would actually use chicken thigh meat. In Malaysia, they use um, they they like to skewer the meat with uh, the chicken skin or fat in between each chunk of meat. I, I'm not a big fan of uh, fatty chicken, so that's why I'm getting chicken breast today. But the way you would dice the meat, just let me get this out of the way. Okay, is and this used to take me forever. And then I'll get my butcher to cut it, and then they'll cut it into like uneven side pieces. So you want fairly even pieces, and you want them quite small, about half inch pieces, and you don't want them in cubes. You want them in almost like um, thin slices if you can have help it. So this is probably about uh, half an inch to an inch in uh, uh, in size. I'm not going to try and do all of this. I'm going to do just some of this. And the other component of satay is the peanut sauce, and I'll show you how I make it. Now, I've got my cookbook that was out uh, just a few days ago, and it does have this recipe in it, except that I've just noticed, just flicking through the book right now, before I got it, came on there, I realized that my publisher had kind of like added one extra ingredient in it, which uh, makes it a little bit interesting, but that's not how uh, I would actually serve it. Essentially, she added uh, this final step, basically sprinkling some crushed peanuts over your peanut sauce. I mean, you know, it doesn't do any harm, but it's a step you can omit if you're one of those people who picked up my cookbooks. Okay, so I've got the chicken pieces here, and to that, I would usually actually use a fresh onion, like a processed fresh onion. But I know in America, Linda, you can actually get like a onion powder quite easily. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's sold in every store. Yeah, that would be perfect. I have not, in fact, been able to find onion powder anywhere in Australia for as long as I've been here. Really unusual. But I don't have onion today, so I'm going to leave it out. But the other thing I would use is my trusty old uh, uh, minced um, lemongrass that I pick up frozen at the uh, Asian grocery store over here. And also the other thing I would put in is garlic, minced garlic. You can use the dried variety if you don't want to be bothered with like getting fresh garlic, peeling it and mincing it. It comes and in jars. Would... It, comes in, it comes minced in jars here pretty readily too. Oh, right, right, right. Cool. Oh yeah, of course you do. That's right. Yeah, we we do get them too, but they tend to be uh, kind of like um, in some sort of like a, a preservative, not preservative, but like oil or, or vinegar or something like that. Is that not? It depends. You can get it in just water. Usually, you have to oh. keep it refrigerated if it comes in water. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So you know more than me. <laughs> but okay. So I've got these, and you know, um, 
One thing I used to use when I was a satay specialist was uh, this Ayam brand. Ayam is actually from Singapore, satay seasoning. But on top of that, I would add all these as well. Now, we're going to bypass that today because I want to show you how we make it from scratch. So I've got all your usual suspects in terms of uh, Asian curry ingredients. And my mom, when she used to make this, remembering that we never had to make satay for as long as we lived in Malaysia. It was only when we came to Australia and couldn't get it. She had to kind of improvise. My mom used to just use a, uh, a curry powder and marinate the meat in curry powder. I've got some pepper here. Okay, so I'll just put a sprinkling of that in there. Some turmeric powder. Hello. Andrew, how are you going? I'm good. I just got home. Oh, okay. Yeah, I started a bit early today because I, I mean, because my my crew have gone back to Malaysia oh, for okay. uh, their ice ce celebrations. Right. I'm kind of understaffed here and have to rejig my schedule altogether. And no this worries. other thing I've added is a uh, fennel, okay, and cumin, small amounts of it. Um, Andrew, I was telling Linda before that we would usually use some crushed uh, fresh onion in here. Yeah. But uh, you can also use onion powder, which I can't get hold of over here in Australia. But because I don't have any fresh onion lying around, because I've, I've been so used to using my my, my, my legendary um, mm. <laughs> uh, fried onion, right, um, I'm going to skip that. And I've got a bit of salt. And the uh -huh. other thing I mentioned was that when I started out selling Malaysian food, I was actually a satay specialist. I used to sell um, hundreds and hundreds of satays at farmers markets on weekends. Oh. But, um, the way I would do it, again, I would use a shortcut. I would use this ayam satay seasoning. I'm mm -hmm. sure you can pick that up quite easily at uh, Asian grocery stores anywhere around the world. But on top of that, I would add the uh, the the the, uh, the onion, the garlic, and also uh, the lemongrass, just to bring out the flavors a little bit more. And mm -hmm. I, I would add salt, and I would add sugar, a fair bit of sugar, actually. Yeah. Does, it matter, does it matter what kind of salt? I usually use kosher salt. No, I, you know, I, 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 I've done, um, I've never been that into sort of like exploring the, the differences, the, the nuances among all these different salt varieties, so I just use like general commercial salt. I have been given some samples of this Malaysian salt, I don't know if my um, crew member can pull out one for me, just so I can show you, but apparently it's healthy for you. <laughs> and it's all the way from Malaysia, but I don't know. Andrew would know in Malaysia, salt is salt, isn't it? We yeah, it's just salt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there might be a difference. How, what's the difference, US, uh, Linda? Uh, here in the U.S., table salt is iodized, and okay. kosher, kosher salt is a larger chunk crystal salt without the oh, iodine. Okay. What does the iodization do to it? I have absolutely no idea. I, I don't like the taste of it very much. Is that right? Okay, yeah. sure. Okay, well there you go. So this is the marinade, and usually I would let this sit over, uh, for at least um, overnight, okay. and sometimes for two days, really. I'm just going to put this aside. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is the peanut sauce, which is something that a lot of people are interested in making. And actually, while I've got you, uh, this is something that I use. What The other component, uh, Linda and Andrew would know this, of uh, satay is what's called compressed rice. And in Malaysia, what they would do is weave these little baskets made out of coconut leaves. Okay, they look like a, kind of like a, literally like a weaved basket, or like they're interlaced and that sort of stuff. Now, in Australia, I can't get a hold of coconut leaves, but then even in Malaysia, the whole weaving process can take like, a good five minutes per little parcel. So um, a lot of us cheat nowadays. And a lot of recipes, if you find, um, if you look up recipes for making compressed rice, they suggest that you uh, basically cook a batch of rice, uh, have it a little bit softer than usual, and then stick it in a tray and like really put heavy Push it stuff, down. Like, you know, encyclopedias and, and, and bricks and that sort of stuff on top of it mm -hmm. to kind of squash it. Now, what I use is this product called, uh, these are basically rice in bags, boil in the bag rices, okay? And before I came across these, I used to actually uh, just uh, bag up rice in a plastic bag fill it up in volume about to about a third of its capacity, and then tie it up over the top, and then 
prick some holes in it and boil it for about an hour or two. Okay, but these things here, which you may or may not be able to pick up in the space, they're basically uh, boiled in a bag, rice, and this is what they look like once they've been boiled up. Okay, they're just pillows. Essentially, they're the same thing as what I used to do. They're uh, plastic bags with like uncooked rice inside, and the bags have piercings all through them, and you just throw them in the saucepan. Uh, and, and, and boil it for like an hour or two, and this is what it looks like, and I'll cut it up and show you what we do with it at the end. Now, I've got the peanut sauce, and I'm using, as usual, an Oscrown stove. The part of the good people at Oscrown, when I was doing my hangout yesterday, I ran out of gas, so uh, that was kind of awkward. So let me actually just use this bigger saucepan here. Okay, peanut sauce, and I cheat a little bit here. I used to use just pure... Um, crushed peanuts, okay, but that meant I had to go through a lot of peanuts every week, so what I, what I did after a while was I cheated by adding a bit of a peanut butter, uh, like uh, this is a crunchy peanut butter. I don't use only crunchy peanut butter because I find that it kind of like, uh, the, the, the flavor is a little bit different. You want to still be able to get that, that, that fresh peanut flavor in it. The other thing I need to mention as well, now, Malaysian food in Malaysia, uh, Evolves quite a bit, and I'm told that even in this day, like you know, in this day and age, a lot of these um, satay vendors nowadays don't use crushed peanuts in their peanut sauce either. And someone suggested at some point, I don't know how true this is, that they use uh, uh, crackers, so basically biscuits that are kind of like crushed up to give mm. it that crunchy flavor. This is a little bit unusual. I don't know if you might have heard something to that effect, Andrew. No, I've been no. back for so long, it's hard for me to tell what's going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some people are saying on oh, commercial vendors of satay nowadays use just use the biscuit crackers, you know, a particular uh, variety that they just throw in because it's cheaper and it's easier as well. Oh, uh, I can ask my cousins. He's in the restaurant business. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, I'm just heating up a saucepan here and adding some uh, carotino, red palm oil that I always use, okay, to this. And what you want to add to this is some minced garlic. Uh, my lemongrass, as usual. Minced lemongrass. I don't actually put any chili in my peanut sauce, but I add it, um, add it separately for those who like it hot. Okay? Now, then I just add some water to it. We make like really big commercial quantities of this, so um, the whole frying up the garlic at the start, we often actually bypass, to be honest. We just throw everything, throw in like you will we'll do like, you know, 20 liters of water, 40 liters of water, throw everything in, boil the hell out of it, and there you go, it's good to go. Okay, the other thing you want is a little bit of a sour aftertaste, and to achieve that, I use this tamarind concentrate that I've shown everyone before, mm -hmm. and tamarind... Uh, a lot of people, if you look through recipes, they'll suggest buying actual tamarind, um, you know, tamarind fruit, and then you got to like soak it in hot water and extract the juice and strain it and that sort of stuff. It's just very, very labor intensive. So all I use is this. This one's from Thailand. It's quite diluted. I'll just pour to show you. There are other brands out there that are quite concentrated. So it really depends on which brand you use. Um, that looks, yeah, that looks exactly like the stuff I got. Oh, is that right? What have exactly. you used it for? Um, I've used it for some chicken and some shrimp dishes, and they, they turned out very nice. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, we use that actually a lot in the shrimp dishes as well. Um, especially nyonya cooking, Malaysian nyonya cooking. Mm -hmm. They like that sour flavor in their dishes. I've just added some salt to this, and I'm going to add sugar. Again, fair bit of sugar for peanut sauce. Okay, I'll just turn all that in. We'll see how it turns out, not just the flavor at the end. Rachel, can you get me more sugar, please? Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to put in some uh, some of that peanut butter. I'm going to use my hand because I don't want to contaminate. My hands are clean. <laughs> I don't want to contaminate the whole bucket with a dirty ladle. And then I'll toss in the crushed peanuts. And these peanuts I would buy uh, raw and fry them up, let them cool down, uh, uh, kind of like a... Uh, uh, block them, like to get rid of the oil, excess oil, and then process them in a, a in a food processor. 
but in so it goes. Would, would, would chopped, dry roasted peanuts work as well? Yeah, yeah. Actually, they usually suggest you kind of like roast the peanuts in an oven. I just find it takes too long, and I'm doing the kind of quantities I'm going through, so it's easier for me to just uh, deep fry them quickly. You can buy them pre-fried as well. And the other thing about peanuts, um, and most people would know this, is that you've got to keep them uh, in an airtight container, any leftover, otherwise they just go go off pretty quickly. Okay. So I've got this. Just let me taste this this quickly. Okay. Needs a bit more salt and more tamarind. Yeah, Andrew, your cookbook is going out today, and Linda, I sent yours out yesterday. Thank along you. With some samples. I should have, you know, it's hard to kind of figure out with the post office how much they're going to charge you for a parcel, but I wish now I'd stuff more of those samples in the bag for you, because. Uh, <laughs> I I I because I, I was in such a hurry, I grabbed a whole bunch of samples for someone else as well, but then I didn't end up sending it to them because it was going to cost way too much. See, what happened was that she they bought a cookbook and they they overpaid me by a buck, a buck or something like that. I said, look, instead of refunding, let me just throw in some free samples, you know, of these spices. And then when I went to the post office, you know, the book itself was going to cost a dollar twenty to ship, but if I threw in the free samples, it was going to cost me nearly ten bucks, and that's true. Right. Uh, yeah. I ended up coming home and yeah. just refunding a couple of bucks. <laughs> I felt kind of bad. And uh, so I've got that, and now I'm going to use my. Uh, this is the fried onion, which does mm -hmm. have. I, I've mentioned before the difference between the fried onion commercial variety and the fried shallot. Mm -hmm. Certainly these brands that I get anyway is that the fried shallot has only shallot and oil in its content, whereas the fried onion has a bit of corn, uh, cornstarch in it as well. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if the peanut sauce thickens up, so I'm going to use the fried onion because it's cheaper. So I'll throw in a couple of handfuls here. And like I said, the recipe is in the cookbook that you both will be getting at some point. Yeah, here in America, those would be uh, those would be French's fried onions. That would be what? Sorry. They would be French's fried onions. They 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 come in most grocery stores in in a little tin, and oh, if you right. ask if you ask them for it, they'll know it. Um, okay. It's it's the same. It's it's just fried in in a little cornstarch. Okay, cool. What what do you use it for? Usually over uh, green beans at Thanksgiving. Okay. So cool. garnish. Or by the, by the handful. Hmm. Now, for personal consumption, I like to fry my own onion, and it turns out very nice, but it's very labor intensive. Not just for, I mean, for some of my dishes as well, but you know, fresh fresh onion that you slice up very, very thinly and then fry up is just like, you know, there's nothing to compare, you know. Mm -hmm. that way. So, I don't know if you can see this. This has thickened up perfectly. Yeah. Okay. And when it cools down, it will actually thicken up a little bit more. I think a lot of people struggle with uh, peanut sauce recipes because they complain that you know it's not thickening up, thickening up sort of thing, you know, the way they want it to. But there you go. As you can see, just very quick and easy. And this is exactly what I do for my restaurant. Mm -hmm. If you want to do add some chili to it, what I would suggest you do is get some chili paste, preferably the you know just straight out of like uh, dried chilies that have been reconstituted in some hot water and then blended you would just fry that up in some oil with a little bit of salt okay and you want a fair bit of oil because what you would do when you serve this up in Malaysia you would have like a drizzle of that over the top and it gives nice a and very really nice shiny. red color yeah that's right I, I, I omit that like I say because a lot of Aussies don't like their chili um, so I've got that, and just let me check with my staff if they managed to find the skewers. Did you find the skewers? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, he's just going to bring some over now. But, okay, in the meantime, I'll show you what this looks like. These are the rice parcels. And Linda, this we actually eat cold, well, room temperature anyway. If you refrigerate it, it will actually go quite hard. But you want it room temperature and dry. soft but cold. And a lot of Aussies, I mean, I, I had it on my menu just because... You know, that's how we serve it in Malaysia, but a lot of Aussies don't know what to do with it, you know. They, they actually cook a hot, like, fluffy rice to go with their satay, but, you know, it's just a traditional thing. Just let me find a cutting board. Just give me a second. Okay. 
So I'm just going to cut this up. Because of its size, what I would usually do is cut it into six. And this is what they would look like cut out. I don't know if you can make it, make it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Keep rice. And, yeah, just let me get a plate. Can I get uh, just a small square of banana leaf okay, and then some sliced uh, cucumber? Thank you. Get this out of the way. So this is my, the last of my Ramadan series. Oh my god, I'm so yeah. so worn out from it. <laughs> but after this, I'm going to do a series on Malaysian street food. Okay, so that will be interesting, and I hope you can join me when I do that. But okay, this is what the satay marinade looks like, and the the the, the deal with skewering it. Okay, some of the pieces are quite long and thin. You you don't want to skewer it. Basically, you don't you. You don't want to skewer it through its thickest part. You want to hold it up to the thinnest part and skewer it along the length of it. Okay? And you want to have no gaps in between each piece. And the reason for that is we cook this over an open flame. Okay? This looks quite big, but it's actually quite small. This is, in fact, bigger than what we would use in Malaysia. This, yep. I, I would say this is about three inches by about half an inch wide. It's just the, the webcam doesn't really properly reflect, you know, dimensions. So if so if you used pounded chicken, would it fall apart? If we use what, sorry? If you used pounded chicken? Um, I don't know. I've never used pounded chicken before. You just I take chicken know. take chicken breasts and uh, fillet them into strips and then pound okay. them down until they're thin. Okay. Yeah, it might be okay. I've never yeah. I've never tried that before. As long as it, you know, holds its shape. It should work fine. Okay. But I think if you yeah. pounded the texture, it'll be different. What's that, sorry? The pounded chicken texture will be different. Is that right? Okay. I, I think so because it, once you pound, it yeah. becomes kind of mush. Okay. Harder. Yeah. That, well, that's I'm that's why I'm, I'm I don't know if it would if it would fall apart or not. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably yeah. It's probably better to use just regular chicken. So I've got four sticks here, and now when I was cooking it in commercial quantities, I would cook it on an open grill using charcoal. Okay, but because we're doing this on air and I'm only doing four sticks, I'm going to use one of these. <laughs> I don't know if you can get these. Okay, these are blow torches, and to be, uh, you know. To be honest, when I'm serving this, uh, when I'm selling it in small quantities, what I do is I cook it sous vide. I don't know if you guys know uh, sous vide cooking over in the States. Yeah? So I would bag these up, vacuum, vacuum seal them, and then poach them in their bag on low heat. And then, you know, it makes it cook a lot easier. But I'm going to attempt cooking it from scratch using this. Now, in Malaysia, at some stalls, when they cook them over an open flame, they would have fresh lemongrass and dipped in oil, and they use that as a basting um, uh, uh, stick on the on the satay, just to give it a, a nice, lem more you know, more pungent lemongrassy flavor. And let me just see how I can light this up. Okay, so this is quite <laughs> lethal. I'm just gonna try and grill this. What I usually do, if I don't have access to a an open flame barbecue, is I would pan fry it and then finish it off with this torch just to give it that nice color. I think I might actually do that now because yeah. I think it might not cook through properly all the Probably, way. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Uh, so I've got a pan here. Jackie, won't the taste be different because there's there's no charcoal smell? Yeah, it's, it's not it's not the same. I have to admit, yeah. it's not the same. But like I say, if you're cooking like for a family, you know, and you don't have access, you don't want to like spend half an hour lighting a charcoal barbecue right. and deal with the ashes and all that. This is kind of like you know, and a lot of uh, a lot of Australian restaurants actually deep fry them, which is even worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, it's, it's never the same. I mean, uh -huh. you know, like I said, when I was doing it as a satay specialist and I would go through hundreds of this, 
at any one event, then it was worth me starting up an entire charcoal barbecue, and I would get these custom-made charcoal grills, long skinny ones, right. and have the sardines all lined up in a row like that. But you know, when it became just one of 50 items on my restaurant menu, you know, right, <laughs> it's it difficult. became too hard to do that. So I'm just gonna pan fry this with a little bit of oil on the pan, and we'll see how we go with this. So let me just get another pair of gloves. I think most American homes have barbecues, so that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, yeah, we we do a lot of barbecuing, and we're right now we're we're just now checking a, a beer can chicken. <laughs> What's beer can chicken? It's an entire four to five pound chicken with an open beer can stuffed in the cavity and then grilled for about an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, it's what barbecue season for? right now in the yeah. U.S. Everybody pulls out their barbecues. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. So do you marinate the chicken in anything else at all? Um, you can, but all I did was I put a light coating of olive oil on the outer, on the out, on the outside, and the beer that I used on the inside was a lemongrass beer. Oh, really? What you made it? Yeah. You didn't make it yourself, though. No, no, I didn't make the beer myself. I went out and bought a can of beer. <laughs> oh, okay. Andrew, for uh, yeah, if you don't follow Linda, she's uh, very big on her made brews. That's why I thought I ask her. <laughs> Oh, wow. we, are making, cool. we are making beer tonight, but not for the chicken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just frying up a little bit. Okay. And um, what else about? Yeah. And of course, in Malaysia, you would get not just chicken, you would get beef um, and uh, goats sometimes as well. And yeah. among the Chinese community, because this is actually essentially a very Malaysian, among the Chinese community, they might do a pork right. version of it. The Nyonya Chinese uh, are quite well known for their pork satay. I don't eat pork, so I, I, I've never tried it. And in Indonesia, they're big on uh, pork satay. I think Bali and that sort of stuff are big on um, pork satay as well. Now, like I said, I, I mentioned, Andrew, you would know this. In Malaysia, what they would do, they like the fatty flavor in their, in their meat sort of thing. So in between each piece of chicken, they would have like a layer of skin yeah. or fat. And I hate it that I used to go through and pull them all out. <laughs> that, sound, that actually sounds really good to me. Amazingly <laughs> good. I yeah. love chicken skin. Oh, really? I like chicken skin when it's deep fried, but not any other way. So I just can't stand the kind of like, you know, ew, gooey <laughs> texture. And the other thing is, like, this is, this is actually turning out quite large by Malaysian standards. You probably, in Malaysia, these would be about. Half the size. size of what you will find in Malaysia. And the other thing about Malaysia as well is you would buy not just like a two sticks or four sticks like they do here in Australia. You would order like 20 or 30 sticks and just go through it yourself, you know. So it's kind of a bit of a feast the way we would eat it. But it's just, I mean, like labor costs here are so incredibly high that for me to pay someone to stick these on skewers used to cost me an arm and a leg and that's part of the reason why I pulled it off my... Uh, my, my menu in the end because I just could not keep up with skewering them. I used to actually, when I was working from home, I used to watch the cricket ball because cricket games take like five days to, to finish, you know. So you can sit in front of the TV for eight hours while you're doing this all like mindlessly in front of the TV. <laughs> yeah. But then when my business grew and I had to pay people to do it, first of all, they would do it wrong. You know, all the other all tips I gave you earlier about not having gaps in between, you know, invariably they'll do it wrong and they'll. You know, they'll, they'll have gaps in between, and then once you put it on that open flame, you know, the, the exposed stick is going to, like, burn off, and, and, and the stick will break. And not only that, they would take forever to do them, you know. And it, at some point, it actually worked out for me that for each, for each stick, for someone to put three pieces of meat on each stick would work out in labor cost somewhere between 30 and 50 cents. You know, we're not talking about the, the, the chicken, we're not talking about just for someone to just stand there and put it because they were doing it like, wow. incredibly slow, 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 slow pace. And because we pay our staff so much and we pay them by the hour, you know. Mm -hmm. so it was very, very disheartening. So how about lamb? What's that? How about lamb? Yeah, lamb satay is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. See, lamb is not that accessible in Malaysia. We use goat sort of thing. Um, but certainly, yeah, for sure. The thing about like when we when they have beef satay, they tend to be a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. So chicken would 
generally be the most popular meat. I like beef because it's leaner. Like I say, I, I stay away from the chicken because of the fatty bits in between. Yeah, I tend before. to order beef satay most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we've, we've really gotten we've really gotten away from the from the beef, and we've got an entire freezer full of lamb. So. Oh, well, there you go. Go for your <laughs> life, exactly. Yeah, lamb satay will taste really good. Go yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this so is definitely really one of the dishes fun. I'm planning on trying. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, cooked on a pan with mm -hmm. a bit of oil, and I'm just gonna stick a blowtorch over it just to give it that chart look. look. So that's one of my modern improvisation. It doesn't quite give you the same chart look you would get using charcoal, but you know, it does have a nice effect. Can, can you give it a, a fake satay smell of you uh, kind of have smoke? You know, some, some restaurants yeah. use smoke and cover the pot with it and smoke it. All oh, right, just, really? just to give it a smoky flavor. Yeah, I maybe try that. I do that. Yeah, I do that in the oven with uh, large cuts of meat. I do it with a, a little bit of liquid smoke in a pan underneath the underneath the cut of meat. How long do you do that for? Oh, it doesn't take more than ten minutes underneath oh, right. the whole underneath a whole pan of, of meat, and the the, okay. the smell of the smoke just fills up the area. And really, I yeah. should try that. What kind of liquid smoke are they like? Different flavors, or are they just uh, probably the best known one here in the U.S. is uh, bouquet, B-O-U-Q-U-E-T. It's uh, it's it's a pretty standard one. Is that right? Okay, I should try that. Huh? So you think the sauté smell with the smoke? I think. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's the sauté, and I'm mm -hmm. just gonna like assemble it. So I've got some cucumber here, and the mm -hmm. way we would cut the cucumber traditionally is just into chunks. We don't slice it up, we don't, you know, shred it or whatever. Just cut them like into like, kind of like. Yeah, just chunks. Yes, it's hard to describe, and you know, because I mean, it's a little bit tough when I hire people who are non-Malaysian and they don't have a frame of reference or why, and you say, oh, can you cut up some cucumber, go with my satay, and then not slice it up or whatever. You think, no, 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 that's not how it's done. They're not be I'm being a little bit pedantic here, but it's just you know when you're trying to recreate something from your you know from your Malaysian experience, it's, uh, you know some of this can, can can get a little bit lost. Okay, and the other thing what they would serve in Malaysia with this would be uh, onion, chunks of onion. Yes. That right, Andrew. And yes, I, I, I love eating raw, fresh onion, raw onion. Raw, raw yeah, onion. Raw. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I never got into that bit. Is it like a is it like just a yellow onion or a no sweet red onion? red onion. Red yeah, yeah, right. oh, okay, I, I understand that, yeah. So every time you order it from the from the stand, you would get like, you know, some of these rice cubes, mm -hmm. some cucumber, some onion, the satay, and you'll get a bowl of the sauce and so the sauce has thickened right up over here. Mm -hmm. And this is how I would I used to serve it up in my restaurant. Well, I'll take a photo thick. of this. Yeah, oh, that's that you know, great. Uh, it'd be nice if you have that drizzle of ch uh, oily chili sauce over the top, mm -hmm. but that's all there is to it. Yeah, um, so I hope you give it a try. Play around with the flavors. Now, this recipe book, like I said, um, is on its way to you. It'll have the satay recipe, but if you want to play around with the marinade in terms of like the amount of spices, the turmeric, the cumin, and all that sort of stuff, if you don't have time, like I say, throw in a, a pack of uh, satay seasoning or a, uh, even like, you know, some mild curry powder or something like that, you know, and then add uh, add onion, garlic, and lemongrass to it, and some sugar, and a little bit of salt, and you're good for the marinade, okay? Right. So, well, thanks very much. This is, like I said, this is the final last series of the uh, Ramadan Bazaar, but starting hopefully next week, I'll, I'll have to check my schedule, starting next week, I'll start up a series of Malaysian street food uh, cooking uh, hangouts, and I hope you can join us then. Thank you very much, Linda and Andrew. Yep, thank I'll you. see you next time. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. okay bye. Bye.